negative is dangerous, the positive is free, and we're facing a challenge. I have a little poem here that was sent to me a while back. It's simply entitled Today, Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. There are two days in every week about which we should not worry. Two days which should be kept free from fear and apprehension. One of these days is yesterday with its mistakes and cares, its faults and blunders, its aches and pains. Yesterday has passed forever beyond our control. All the money in the world cannot bring back yesterday. We cannot undo a single act we performed. We cannot erase a single word we said. Yesterday is gone. The other day, the other day we should not worry about is tomorrow with its impossible adversities its burdens, its large promise, and poor performance. Tomorrow is also beyond our immediate control. Tomorrow's sun will rise, either in splendor, behind a mat, or behind a mass of clouds, but you can be sure it will rise. Until it does, we have no stake in tomorrow, for it is as yet unborn. This leaves only one day, today. Any man can fight the battles of just one day. It is only when you and I add the burdens of those two awful eternities, yesterday and tomorrow, that we break down. It is not the experience of today that drives men mad. It is remorse or bitterness for something which happened yesterday and the dread of what tomorrow may bring. Let us therefore live but one day at a time. We must live with the perspective that our best years are never in the past or the future. They are always now, in the present. Every day is a gift. That is why it's called the present. This is true no matter what season of life we are in today. The more we give in to the temptation to live in the past or worry about the future, the more we shall miss out on the challenge, opportunity, and joy of the present. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for, our, for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. When you feel like quitting on life, consider this devotion by Charles Swindon. Every achievement worth remembering is stained with the blood of diligence and scarred by the wounds of disappointment. Let me read that again. Every achievement worth remembering is stained with the blood of diligence and scarred by the wounds of disappointment. To quit, to run, to escape, to hide, none of these options solve anything. They only postpone the acceptance of and reckoning with reality. Churchill put it well when he stated, wars are not won by evacuations. Giving thought to giving up, considering the possibility of quitting, don't. The only time the Lord ever used the word easy was when he referred to a yoke. And God's promises about him on winter are thriving. If you read, you look in your Bible at uh, Psalm 92nd chapter. <coughs> Beginning with the 12th verse. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Inspired psalmist gives us three promises of thriving for believers, even in the autumn and winter of their lives. Number one, be like a palm and a sun and a cedar tree. A palm tree. Palms grow and thrive under great pressure. They can certainly take the heat. In the same way, those in the autumn and winter of their lives often face the pressures of failing health, loneliness, betrayal of their values by their own children, fear of dying, and so forth. Matthew, the 28th chapter, says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. And then the cedar. It endures all climates. The cedar is not afraid of cold or snow. It grows tall, 
ancient and strong in tropical or frozen climates, low or high altitudes. The first chapter of Psalm, the third verse. He shall be like a tree planted in the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. This should never cease. There is no fallow season for the righteous. God expects a consistency of service throughout our lives. Isaiah, the 46th chapter, the fourth verse. I am your God and will take care of you until you are old and your hair is gray. I made you and will care for you. I will give you help and rescue you. And then we want to keep it forever fresh and green. The righteous do not spoil or wilt. Rather, God's Spirit is present to help us stay fresh and green and proclaim it. That is an unceasing life of ministry. Deuteronomy, the 30, 33rd chapter, 25th verse. The bolts of your gates will be iron and bronze, and your strength will equal your days. In other words, as your days so shall be your strength. Life even meaningful that truly counts and makes a difference is never, never over for those who know Jesus. Even for our Savior, he was, it was not until his last breath that he proclaimed, it is finished. If today was your last day, could you affirm that it is finished? Could you honestly say that you've accomplished all that you were put here to accomplish? You've tied up whatever loose ends you can could you trust God for the unfinished business left behind? Or are there things that you know are your responsibility to finish? Amen.